You've never heard of several nations going to war over water scarcity, but could the struggle for the Nile be the first? Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia all depend heavily on the Nile as the only source of fresh water available, but one of these countries has other plans someone wants to build a dam. How would this affect the economy of the surrounding countries? What's the next line of action? Let's find out. In 1882, Britain colonized Egypt and stayed in power there until 1956. Egyptian cotton required irrigation with water from the River Nile and was essential to the country's textile industries. So British hydrologists came up with a scheme to control the Nile's flow by creating dams and reservoirs in nations downstream. The scheme, however, had a serious problem. It failed to take into account the interests of nine upstream nations such as Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. You might say the, quote, historically acquired rights of Egypt and Sudan should serve as the starting point for any discussions over the dam and Ethiopia. However, believes that this goes against the values that all three nations adopted in 2015. The Nile conflict has entered a new period of complexity as a result of accelerating climate change, forcing regional states to struggle for the security of their food, energy, and water supplies. The relationship between Ethiopia and Egypt has become even more complicated as a result of the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD, an Ethiopian non-consumptive hydropower project on the Nile. Ethiopia and Egypt no doubt see the project as an existential threat and a matter of existential necessity, so they oppose the project. However, this struggle extends beyond the exchange of material goods and touches on the basic identities of the two republics. Since the GERD project's construction began in 2011, Cairo has argued that it endangers the stability of Egypt and the region, notably Egyptian water security. Ethiopia, on the other hand, insists that the GERD is a development initiative rather than a security-based political initiative. Ethiopia looks to grow her economy, and the hydroelectric power that can be generated from the Nile will be a major boost. Despite these various claims, it is obvious that the driving forces behind the Nile issue are the competing parties' attempts to uphold border security or the maintenance of state identity. When internal and external changes sever the continuity of established identities and worldviews, skepticism may result. In light of this, one could contend that the GERD project poses a threat to Egypt's enacted world, to which the Nile is integral to their history, culture, and civilizational identity. In fact, 90% of the Egyptian population live within 100 miles of the Nile. So to say that the Nile is pretty important will be a major understatement. Therefore, project-related developments may push Egypt to reevaluate its national identity, which is based on the Nile River. When Ethiopia unveiled the proposal in 2011, Cairo instantly opposed it out of concern about this potential outcome. When Ethiopia diverted the river to build the dam in 2013, the situation further escalated. In the end, Egypt brought up the GERD conflict in the UN Security Council. Plus, Addis Ababa is battling for both material and intangible security. In Ethiopia, the GERD serves as both a physical piece of infrastructure and a representation of solidarity in the face of poverty and perceived backwardness. It is presented as a project for achieving sovereignty compared to Ethiopia's triumph against Italy in the Battle of Adwa in 1896. Instead of a foreign aggressor, abject poverty was the internal foe that this modern victory overcame. The GERD also transformed public opinion about the Nile, or a bay in Amharic, from one of a river that plunders Ethiopia's priceless resources to one of a river that propels Ethiopian growth. The ruling class now uses the river, which once served as a point of contention, to bring the populace together under a socially manufactured new Ethiopianness, with the GERD at its core. Furthermore, the boundaries between Ethiopia and Egypt are not the only place where this identity conflict exists. Ethiopia frames the dam as an African undertaking because 11 African nations share the river and some people think that the GERD will aid Africa's transformation to a greener economy. Egypt, on the other hand, claims that the same developments pose a risk to the security of the Arab water supply. Front and center in the conflict between the Nile worlds are competing efforts to either Africanize or Arabize the Nile. In the end, the GERD dispute is not just about the tangible concerns of resource security. Instead, there is a tension between Ethiopia's developing new Nile-centric identity and the ancient Nile-centric identity of Egypt. In the framework of this identity conflict, negotiation is a zero-sum game. 
Therefore, attempts to desecuritize the Nile will be necessary to strike an agreement between the two governments on the tangible issues against a challenging background of conflicting identities. Egypt has long been known as the gift of the Nile, since it has always relied on the river to survive. However, experts warn that Egypt may approach a situation of absolute water scarcity within the next two years. According to experts, there is a possibility of a water imbalance because of climate change, population increase, and a regional struggle over water resources. Nearly all Egyptians receive their drinking water from the Nile River, which is where about 90% of the country's people reside. The nation now has an annual water deficit, and the United Nations predicts that by 2025, it will fall under the category of water shortage, unless, of course, innovative measures are taken. According to specialists in water management, rising sea levels are causing saltwater intrusions that not only harm water supplies, but also ruin agricultural soil. The land in the Nile Delta is sinking while the Mediterranean Sea's waters are rising. As a result, the Nile Delta is now the second most vulnerable region on Earth to the effects of climate change in terms of sea level rise, according to Karim Eljindi, an associate fellow at the think tank Chatham Institute. As we mentioned earlier, 11 African nations share this river, therefore is not just Egypt that is reliant on it. According to opponents of the project, the completion of a mega dam on the river poses yet another serious threat to the region's water supply. This has been a heated issue involving Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia going on for 10 years. Ethiopia will stop at nothing to harness such an energy supply and lift her people out of poverty, and the hydroelectric dam is now almost finished and has started filling. According to expectations, the GERD will elevate the nation to a significant power exporter in the area. People have never actually engaged in battle only over water. Now may be the time in history when that alters. This is a statement from Mohammed Mahmoud, director of the Middle East Institute's Climate and Water Program. In 2019, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed stated that the situation with Egypt could lead to war. The Associated Press said that in 2021, Egypt and Sudan conducted combined military drills to demonstrate their close security cooperation in light of the ongoing conflict. El Jindi claims that the dam's effect on the water supply will depend on how quickly it fills. He stated that it will determine the impact of this disruption and the reduction to the volumes of water that go to Egypt. This comes off the fact that Egypt's 109 million population is expected to increase dramatically over the next few decades, further increasing the region's water consumption. Mahmoud predicted that there will be an imbalance between the reduced supply and increased demand for water, not only because of socioeconomic conditions and population growth, but also because of climate change. Officials from Ethiopia have assured that the project won't affect Egypt's or Sudan's access to water. The three countries' negotiations to reach a deal on filling the dam have lately stagnated. Mahmoud predicts that eventually cooperation will be necessary because there will be no other course of action. But the 2018 round of negotiations ended in failure. Ethiopia is to blame for the impasse, according to Egypt. However, a lot of academics attribute the deadlock to trees from the colonial past. Some have suggested that the argument might turn into a water war. The dam has undoubtedly contributed to significant friction between Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. However, the dam has assisted in changing long-standing power dynamics and may open the door for greater cooperation among all the Nile-dependent nations. In our world so far, a conflict over water resources has not yet broken out between any nations, and there is no reason for this situation to be any different. The disputing parties find it challenging to predict how the dam would affect their access to water without information like storage plans. Can we say a game changer would be having this data and sharing it? Let's know what you think in the comments section below. The ongoing conversations also have the potential to integrate scientific research, so it's important for these difficult discussions to be had and prevent the situation from getting out of hand into a full blown war. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing updates.